Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So governments across the world have promised to investigate the extent of alleged tax avoidance by the rich and powerful after the vast leak of documents from a Panamanian law firm. Here, David Cameron came under pressure to make good on his promise to crack down on offshore tax havens, as his own late father was said to be among those named in relation to investments set up by Mossack Fonseca. Downing Street insisted that was a private matter. In the first of tonight's reports, here's our political correspondent, Michael Crick. More than 11 million documents from 214,000 offshore companies, all leaked from a law firm in Panama called Mossack Fonseca. They reveal what's alleged to be a global network of tax avoidance, evasion and money laundering. From Iceland to Pakistan, Saudi Arabia to China, they implicate 140 politicians or public officials, including 12 current or former heads of government or state. The leaks from Panama should be fuel for David Cameron's efforts to crack down on evasion and avoidance, a campaign he's run for several years now. I'm going to push for international agreements to fight the scourge of tax evasion and aggressive tax avoidance. Why does this matter so much? Because some people use complicated and fake structures to hide their profits and avoid taxes and also because bribes are often held in opaquely owned companies with bank accounts in secrecy havens. Say hello to mum and dad. But now, most embarrassing for the PM, today's leaks also show how much his own late father, Ian, was also a big client of Mossack Vonseca, and they helped him build complicated structures in secret havens. This program showed last year how Ian Cameron, a stockbroker, set up an offshore firm, Blairmore Holdings, to help clients avoid UK tax. But now Mossack Fonseca's leaked emails show in great detail how Ian Cameron's firm worked. In the Bahamas, an offshore tax haven, Blairmore recruited a team of four dozen residents, including a part-time bishop, to sign paperwork and maintain the firm was offshore, while Ian Cameron flew specially to the Bahamas for board meetings. Did the Cameron family still benefit from the offshore fund, Downing Street was asked today. It's a private matter, a spokeswoman said. Labour seemed to take the same view. Well, I'm not commenting on an individual, and I, um, what I am saying is that this is about a wider, much wider uh, set of affairs now that we need, where we need to see this government taking action internationally, where it has this fallen isn't the short. Government hampered from even... taking action by David Cameron's own father, seemingly been involved well, in part where, of the problem. This is where David Cameron and George Osborne are going to have to look at this matter from, from the point of view of resorting HMRC, but also to say, what are they doing internationally? Well, of course, these are important matters, and government absolutely does take it importantly. Uh, that's why we've already done a lot of work in closing down some of these loopholes, and we'll do whatever else is needed to make sure that people pay their taxes. That's what people should do. But the biggest story internationally in today's leaks, though maybe not that shocking, is an alleged $2 billion network of deals and loans thought to benefit Vladimir Putin and his family. Putin's not named himself on any of the papers, but his best friend Sergei Roldugin, a professional musician, features heavily as having acquired a $100 million fortune. It's all a smear, the Kremlin says, to destabilize Putin ahead of Russia's parliamentary elections. Meanwhile, the Icelandic Prime Minister Sigmundur Gunnlaugsson faces calls to resign tonight after the leaks showed he'd failed to declare shares in a firm set up in the British Virgin Islands. Now I'm starting to feel a, a bit strange about these questions because it's like you are accusing me of something. No, I'm just asking. And he recently walked out of a TV interview when asked questions about his wife's investments. But the French president Francois Hollande, not personally implicated, welcomed the leaks.
It's good news that we learn of this revelation, because this will give us additional taxes from those who committed fraud. Mossack Fonseca, the Panamanian law firm, today denied they've ever done anything wrong. From the Channel Islands to the Caribbean, for this government, one big problem is that so many other tax havens are British dependencies. A point David Cameron will have to address when he hosts an international anti-corruption summit next month. And we'll have more details on those allegations from Michael Crick at the end of the programme. But it turns out it's really not that difficult to set up an offshore company. Not much more than a few minutes' work and a couple of thousand euros. There's nothing illegal about it either. Where it all gets rather greyer, though, is when it comes to telling HM Customs and Excise all about it. Paul McNamara explains how it works and what strays beyond the letter of the law. What is it that makes a secret worth keeping? Welcome to the British Virgin Islands, a gem of the Caribbean with mile upon mile of pristine white sandy beaches. And you won't have to fight for a space for a deck chair, as the BVI has a tiny population of just 28,000 people. 28,000 people, but more than 600,000 registered companies. Companies like Sandalwood Continental Limited, a company you've probably never heard of, but has a billion dollars worth of Russian loans sloshing around its accounts in the BVI. So just how did it get its money? Well, let's go back a few steps to the state-controlled Russian commercial bank located in Cyprus. According to the ICIJ, the Panama Papers reveal that the RCB and some other state banks gave about a billion dollars in unsecured loans to a private bank based in St. Petersburg called Bank Rossia. There is no explanation in the files of why the banks agree to extend such unorthodox credit lines. Bank Rossia is headed up by a pal of Putin's, Yuri Kovalchuk. It's also part owned by another chum, Sergei Rodugin, who just so happens to be the godfather of one of Mr. Putin's daughters. Bank Rossia then decided to transfer at least a billion dollars to the specially created offshore entity called Sandalwood Continental. And what does Sandalwood do with the money? Well, about six million dollars was spent on a yacht and shipped to a port near St. Petersburg. And another 11.3 million was reportedly loaned to a company that owns the upmarket ski resort of Igora, where Vladimir Putin's daughter got married just 18 months later. The parties involved deny doing anything illegal. So offshoring all makes sense, right? OK, well, we'll make it a bit simpler. I could go online right now and set up a company offshore in the British Virgin Islands, in the Cayman Islands, anywhere. All I need is about 10 minutes and 1,500 pounds. Now, whenever I do any work, instead of being paid for my British bank account, I could pay for my company offshore. I'd pay less tax or tax avoidance, but that's perfectly acceptable as long as I declare it here at the HMRC. You might not like it, some people will call it morally repugnant, but it is legal. The problem is not everyone declares it, and that's when it becomes tax evasion, which is illegal. And it's pretty easy to hide money received from offshore companies from HMRC because of the secrecy laws in these tax havens. That is, of course, until a law firm in Panama that sets up these companies has millions of documents leaked. According to campaigners, this isn't just a matter of the wealthiest getting wealthier here. In many cases, there are real victims. We found that corruption and money laundering and the impunity it gives are actually major contributors to global poverty and inequality. So we're talking about money that's stolen from healthcare systems, from education, from infrastructure in developing countries. It's taken out of those countries and then it's been given an, a sort of layer of secrecy by the global sort of offshore financial system. It's then put into the UK, into places such as the UK property market. It's the little treasures. Last year, around 1,200 cases were prosecuted by HMRC. Many of these are self-employed people, small business owners or benefits cheats. But in the last five years, just 11 cases of offshore tax evasion were prosecuted. Leaving many to question, has the tax man really got his priorities right? Let's keep this between us. In tonight's main news, governments around the world have started investigations following the uh, investigate following the leak of millions of documents from a Panamanian law firm alleging all sorts of tax avoidance and offshore asset hiding by the rich and powerful. 
In Iceland tonight, protesters are amassing, calling for the resignation of the Icelandic Prime Minister, who has also been named in the Panamanian papers. Well, now our political correspondent, Michael Crick, joins us again now from Westminster. Michael, what's cooking? Well, the uh, latest news is that the Icelandic Prime Minister has said tonight that he's not going to resign, despite uh, calls for him to uh, do so. And here in the British political arena, we've been getting uh, more names. Uh, former, uh, we've got various uh, Tory donors, uh, David Rowland, uh, Lord Bamford, the Fleming family. They've all been named uh, within the uh, Panama Papers, we've learnt within the last uh, hour or so. Uh, and former Tory MPs, Tony Baldry, Edward Ducan uh, and Howard Flight. And also a leading uh, UKIP figure, uh, Aaron Banks, a close associate of uh, Nigel Farage. And I didn't even have time earlier to mention other world leaders, the, the, the Argentine and Ukrainian presidents, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, the King of Saudi Arabia. Uh, now, it should be stressed that none of these people are said to have done anything illegal. Michael Crick, what a caveat.